Welcome to the programme. Well, anti-gay laws in Nigeria have faced a barrage of criticism from around the world, but had huge support from our Nigerian audience. President Goodluck Jonathan signed off the law which outlaws same-sex marriage, gay organisations and public displays of affection. Well, lawmakers say they're simply reflecting the prevailing values of Nigerian society. Well, that's what we're going to discuss for the first part of today's programme with a Nigerian MP from the ruling party and also from a Nigerian man who was attacked for being gay. Plus, we're going to speak to three cancer sufferers who are blogging about their illness. It follows a couple of controversial online articles which questioned whether a US woman was sharing too much about her own breast cancer. It started a conversation and we're going to tap into it. Here are all of the ways you can get in touch throughout the programme. We're live and we're looking forward to you getting in touch. Well, thank you for being with us here on World Have Your Say. If you want to get in touch with us over the next 50 minutes, all of your comments will come here to me on my tablet. We'll try and weave into as many into the discussion as we can and obviously put them to some of the guests who are joining us. Let me introduce you to who's joining us to start with. We are joined by Uche Ozorumba, who is in Abuja. He's from NOA Polls, which is a socio-economic polling organisation and collects information from across Nigeria. Also joined by Michael Igadaro, who is Nigerian gay rights activist in New York. And also Raquel Jacobs, who is a social worker in Lagos. Let's start by speaking to Uche, who is in Abuja. I know you collect information from people across Nigeria and you've polled people's opinions on um, these gay laws. What did you find out? Basically, uh, we polled uh, on the gay rights, anti-gay rights, uh, as of June 3rd, 2013. That was last year. And uh, we asked a couple of questions. The first question we asked was about uh, awareness of the anti-gay bill which was still in the House of Representatives of Nigeria then, and we found out that about 69% uh, of Nigerians were aware of the bill. Then the second question went to find out exactly whether people were in support of the bill, and we also got to find out that we had 95%, that's about 9 in 10 Nigerians, were you know, in support of the bill as at then when it was in the House of, Re uh, the House of Representatives. Then also, we also got to ask whether, you know, it's infringed on human rights or not. And we also found out that most of the people, that 83% said it, it actually does not infringe on any human rights. And most of it comes from, you know, morality and also their religious beliefs here in Nigeria. Well, before we put those points to our guests joining us from New York, let's pull up this comment from President Goodluck Jonathan's spokesman, Ruben Abati. He told AP on Monday that this is a law that is in line with the people's cultural and religious inclination. So it's a law that is a reflection of the beliefs and orientation of Nigerian people. And I have to say that when we put this up on our Facebook page earlier in the week, within a couple of hours, we had around a thousand comments. And I have to say the majority, although it's not scientific, were supporting the anti gay laws. Let's bring in Michael who is in New York. You've heard there nine out of ten people that were polled by Uche's organization said that they supported the anti-gay laws. First of all, does that surprise you? Not at all. It doesn't surprise me at all. First of all, I want to ask him if nine of ten Nigerians support the bill, what happens to the one person who is left? You know, what, what do they know about the bill, first of all? Nigerians don't have knowledge of the bill. They believe that the bill is a same-sex marriage bill. It's against same-sex marriage, not against uh, other things, not against people assisting health care services, not against people, you know, being free to live who they are. You know, Nigerians believe that, you know, gay men are asking for same-sex marriages, which is not true. From my understanding, there's no gay man that I know who is asking for same-sex marriage in Nigeria. People are asking to live their lives the, to, to, to assess healthcare services, to just be who they are without any, any people, anyone discriminating against them, without someone sending them for jail to 14 years, you know. I, I'm really surprised at that. I, even, if, even if they all believe, uh, let's say they all believe that, you know, uh, they're asking for same-sex marriage or whatever it is. But, you know, what, what happens to the one person that is left? You know, if majority supports, what happens to the one person that is left? That person is a human being. It, it could be your brother, Mr. Uche. It could be your sister. It could be your mom. It could be your father. You know, what happens to that person? Basically, you know, what we do is we pass across the information that Nigerians, you know, give us. We, we don't have an opinion of our, of our own. That's exactly what the majority of Nigerians say. 
You understand? And we're in a, in a kind of a society where the majority carries the vote, that sort of thing. So what we're saying is nine in ten Nigerians, you know, are in support of the law. You understand what I mean? Now, if you check it very well, most of these things stem from the fact that it's more of a cultural issue or more of, you know, a religious issue. You, you know Nigerians very much. Nigeria is more of a country that's quite conservative when it comes to issues like that. So, you, you know, whatever the law is saying, that's exactly what it was what that was proposed. That's what, you know, they are in support of. That's what the poll exactly says. Okay, let me ask you, 10 in 10 of Nigerians are against corruption. Is there a law that says that sends people to jail for corruption? You know, people, I mean, what? they should ask the questions too. 10 in 10 of Nigerians are, are against corruptions. 10 in 10 of Nigerians want electricity. 10 in 10 of Nigerians want good well, health. They want good, exactly, they want good exactly what, what Is there a what law saying, against that? What, what you're saying now you get, is, is not a poll that we've conducted, but this is a poll we conducted based on, you know, an issue that was raised in the House of Representatives, you know, uh, last year. And now it's been signed into law. You know, if we conduct a poll on in, in terms of corruption, you will also be able to get the result and know what exactly Nigerians are saying. You know, this is the, the particular thing that Nigerians are saying concerning this particular law that has been passed. And Michael, it's I'm fair to say that, that Uche is only talking on behalf of his polling organisation and the things that they've discovered. He's not talking from a personal perspective. Now, let's just pull up an, an example of uh, many of the videos that have come in to us on WhatsApp. We've been inundated, quite frankly, but here's a flavour of what we're hearing from Nigeria. I am Chidozi Anusi. I am from Nigeria. I agree with my president's spokesman that the, that the anti-gay law is a reflection of our belief and the rotation. Yes, it's right. And I and I commend and I commend my president for signing for signing the bill into law. Because homosexuality is not in our it's not our custom, it's not our tradition. It is totally un African. It's, to, it's a total rebellion to the Almighty God. It is totally satanic. I agree with the Nigerian president's spokesman that the new anti gay law is a reflection of the Nigerian people. Africa had their norms, culture, and tradition. It has nothing to do with religion. We have what we call abomination. Igbo people of Eastern Nigeria call it Aru. We don't hate gays. We hate gay practices. Eluchko Ahali from Nigeria. My name is Kayo I'm from Nigeria. When it comes to gay issue and as part of the legislation in Nigeria, well, I believe in freedom of expression, I believe in human rights, and ultimately, I believe that judgment belongs to God. Thank you. Well, let's put this point to Michael. I want to get a little bit more of your story. Obviously, you're in New York now, but as a Nigerian gay man, what experiences have, have you been put through? Well, I've lived the last, past, the last 10 years of my life in Nigeria. I mean, when I left my parents' home and I lived in fear. I lived in constant fear, constant harassment from the police, constant fear from going to healthcare services. It's been, you know, living on the ground, being stigmatized by people, you know, not even, not even policemen, not even the law itself, but by, by the community that where I lived in. You know, it's Nigerian gay people are, are very, very living their lives well. And but, you know, the, the, the government, and the people there, they are the ones stigmatizing people. They are the ones putting those laws that's not necessary. You know, my life there in Nigeria, where I remember when I was attacked, I was beaten, I was almost beaten to death. If not the safe of people came to save me, you know, just because I live my life, just because I want to be free, just because I speak the truth. The truth, which is people desire to live their life freely. People desire to have access to healthcare services. People desire to, have to, to live their lives, you know. No one is asking for gay marriages. I wasn't asking for gay marriages. I was just asking to live my life freely when I was beaten up because I was a gay rights activist. And now I'm a refugee. In, 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 in another country, you know, it, we, we, which, which other Nigerians are also. There are many Nigerian gay men who are around the world. If they're right in, in, in London, there's B.C. Alimi, who is there in London, also is a refugee also. There's other people in Belgium, in Germany, who are Nigerians also, who are living as refugees. They have left their country because they, are, they cannot live in their country because it doesn't accept them. That is not fair, but they are they they are being useful to that to the countries they are. They are they are they are provided they are they are they are, uh, are contributors to the economy to the economy in the, in the countries they live in. We are you work, I work, I pay my taxes, I live my life freely, and I, and I contribute to society here we are living. I could be doing that in Nigeria, you know. I could be contributing myself to Nigeria. I could be a doctor in Nigeria also, helping people out. But because my country do not do, do not accept me, I'll leave. I'll leave and go and provide services for other people there who needs me who could take for who I am.
you know. Michael, I want to introduce you to Raquel Jacobs, who's a social worker who joins us from Lagos. First of all, Raquel, maybe you could tell me your take on these anti-gay laws, and then I'd be keen for you to have a conversation with Michael. But first of all, your, your view on the anti-gay laws. Well, um, I am in total support of the anti-gay law because as a social worker, I work with young people who, first and foremost, are from really messed up families. So even from families who there's a father and there's a mother and the child is messed up, the child is doing crazy stuff, and you don't know how to fix that child. So I, I am in support of it because I'm wondering, so what happens to a child who is in a family where a father is a man and the mother is a man, and I'm wondering, so how would that child come out to be? If the child understands in school that a marriage is between a father and a mother, male and female, and then comes home and sees a male and a male, how would that child be formed? As a social worker, it's hard to even work with a child that is from a broken home. Not to talk of a home where there is a father and there's a father, and both are saying, oh, I'm your wife, and the person is male. I don't think that works at all. Even Christianity doesn't hold it. Islam doesn't hold it. So from my social point, worker point of view, I think it's actually very, very wrong for that law to be allowed in Nigeria. So for it to be banned, I am in total support of it. And I'm not saying, Michael, I heard you earlier saying stuff about paying your taxes in America and living a good life. It is OK. We're not saying that you're a bad person. We're just saying that your lifestyle affects other people. It is not just living your life. If you're living your life in Nigeria and you don't want to get married, one day you say you want to get married and live like other people, and then they will allow you to get married. So we're saying that catch it from the grass tree. Before it becomes something bad, we need to hold it from the ground. And that's what we're trying to do right now. We're saying that before the families become something else, family is supposed to be father and mother. So if we allow you to be begin to marry, it will just distort everything. And the children, I, do I don't know, I, I can't begin to tell you what we see as social workers. So I just think that this is going to add more problems on the existing problems we already have in Nigeria. I, I think it's not what we should be discussing right now. We're discussing corruption and other things like you said, but I also think that it's an issue that we should tackle before it becomes worse. I have a few, sorry, uh, if, if I could jump in here. Of I have a few questions for you. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I have a few questions for you. You're a social worker, yes, right? Please. You know, you, you work as a social worker, and I, I, I work as a social worker too in Nigeria yes, before please. I moved to, the New, to New York, and I still do. But, you know, as a social worker, when you, when you come across a child who was thrown out of their, for, their, for their parents' house for being gay, you know, how do you attend to the yes, child? Please. Do you send them away? I'm just curious. Do you send I'm the child away? Child, because a child that is thrown out of his family. If a, if a father and a mother knows that their child is gay, they will hide the child out of shame. I'm telling you this well, point blank. Well, you know, in Nigeria, I was it's gay. It's a shameful thing to have a child that I is was gay. gay. I was 17. I was trying to, my, my, my mom and my dad threw me out, you know. I was gay. My mom and my dad threw me out of the house, you know. And I was 17. I went to the street. I lived in the street for 10 years because I was gay, because my mom and my dad couldn't accept me for being who I, who I am. And, you know, I'm, I'm just surprised why laws could be based on religion or, or, or while culture. While on the street, Michael, while on the street in Lagos, while in Nigeria on the street, quite quick question, what were you doing on the street? Were you harassing other men and asking them out? Well, that, 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 that's, what, that's the question, you know. Gay people don't harass people. Exactly. You know, if, so if you harass are, a if guy people, who is not interested, that's people, you, oh, why are you asking me? I should be asking a female out. Do you understand my people, point of view? Da, da, darling, you darling, listen guy, to me. You meet a guy, you like a guy, he people, looks cute, he's fine. If there are people okay. who, are, who are happier, who are respected, who, 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 who take care of themselves in Nigeria, they are gay people. Let me tell you this. People who, 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 who are very, very respectful to themselves, who take care of themselves, gay people don't go around the street harassing anyone who's not gay. You don't do that. You know? If there are people who are more happy in Nigeria, they are gay people because you know, they live their lives well. They respect themselves. They don't go around harassing people. If the people are corrupt in Nigeria, they are not gay people. Raquel, can I ask you, it's very interesting Nigeria, to hear, no sorry Michael people. to jump in, but Raquel, it's very interesting to say that when you were living on the streets, Michael, did you harass other men? Do you think that gay men are more likely to approach and harass than, say, a, a straight man to go and harass women on the streets of Nigeria? No, I, I, I'm assuming a, a man goes after a woman. So if a man is coming after a man and he's not sure if the man is gay on the street, the guy would definitely scream. A teenager asking another teenage boy that is straight out on the street, the boy will scream. And then people will gather because it's strange, they will beat you up. I'm sure that was what happened to him when he was in Nigeria. He probably saw but a do you, do you think boy, therefore when gay like men are, Raquel, who looks fine. Sorry, Raquel, I just want to establish, yes, do you think it's more likely that gay men would try and harass a man rather than a straight man harassing a woman, or you think it's exactly the same? I think because there are a few of them, if you see any man, they will, they will harass them. Having spoken to a few of them in secondary school who have other people harass them because there are just a few of them. 
that can come out and say, I'm gay. So because they can't come out, out of shame, they will harass the ones that they see. And I'm telling you because I've spoken to a few of them who have said, oh, I've been harassed by a male. And I'm like, okay, show us the guy. And it's like, I can't because I was threatened not to talk. So that was, that's what will happen to them. Because there are a few of them, they're trying to grab as many as they can. So if you see a guy that is fine on the streets, you go after him. So that's why I was telling Michael that when he was on the streets of Nigeria, he probably was harassing men. Well, who, Raquel, who, who let's ask, let's gay, ask Michael whether he was harassing men on the streets of Nigeria. The, well, well, that question is very funny. Harassing men, really? You know, I lived my life in Nigeria. I had a boyfriend. I had people who I dated. I didn't go around harassing people who are not gay. You know, Nigerian gays but don't go around harassing people in Nigeria who are not gay. You know, I, I didn't harass anyone. In fact, people, straight people are the one harassing gay people. They try to rape you. They try to collect money from you because they know you are gay. You, are, you have nowhere to run to. They beat you up because they know you are gay. When I was the street, I had straight men who come after me. They know I'm, I'm this young kid in the street. He doesn't have anywhere to go. You know, go, go, go easily harass him and get, get money from me, beat him or rape him. Those happen to Nigerians in the street. You know, I, I'm just surprised that you're saying that gay people harass people. I mean, if you're a straight man and gay man harassing you, you come and say, oh, someone harassed me and, and say he's gay and he's uh, asking me out and they want to say his name. Oh my God, that's so surprising because they're threatening you. Really? Michael, Raquel, do stay with us. Plenty more to talk about on World Have Your Say. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to be speaking to an NP from the Nigerian ruling party who supports this anti-gay law. Stay with us. No, I, I, I am talking about it. Jeff, oh, let me say something. No, I, I, I am talking about it. Jeff, oh, let me say something. Welcome back to World Have Your Say. We're discussing the anti-gay laws in Nigeria. Still with us is Raquel, who's a social worker in Lagos. Also Michael, who's a Nigerian gay rights activist, but joining us from New York. I'm pleased to say that the Honourable Jagabar Adams Jagabar, who is a member of parliament for the ruling party in Nigeria, the PDP, joins us now live. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. First of all, for people watching around the world, can you outline why you feel and your party feels that these laws are so important in Nigeria? Uh, thank you very much, and thank you, viewers. The truth of the matter is that uh, this law passed is, uh, has a constitutional backing. In uh, Section 39, 38, 13, and 40, 41 of Nigerian Constitution, talk about human rights. But if you go down into 45, it says all these human rights uh, provisions in the Constitution shall not invad uh, invalidate any law that is reasonably justifiable in a democratic society, A, in the interest of defense, public safety, public order, or public morality, or public health. Now, this is a section we rely upon to make this law. We public morality. In Nigeria, or in this African setup, we still believe in morality. Don't forget, I'm a member of parliament, the people that pass this law are parliamentarians. We were elected by a by, by sector of Nigerian society, and this sector, sector includes people that believe, I mean, Christians, Muslims, idol worshippers, uh, atheists. These are the people that form the Nigerian society. And all these people don't believe in gay practice. They believe in public morality. So this is our society. This is Africa, and I think somehow it's wrong to compare culture and culture, to compare what the practice of what they, I mean, what obtain is obtainable in another country with another country. So this is Nigeria, and we did a consultation. We did consult the people who are represented there in support. We, we came to the, the, on the floor of the house. We debated this issue. We called on public hearing. People came and made presentation. And that's how we come about making the law. Well, I can see Raquel is nodding away as you speak, sir. But Michael, I know that you want to ask some questions too, Mr. Jagabar. So do go ahead. Thank you, sir. F f taking, um, I'm, I'm really happy you're, you're joining us today. I want to ask you one question. You know, what, what, does, oh. what does the sodomy law say? The Nigerian sodomy law? I, mean, I know we already have a sodomy law. We criminalize against same sex, same -sex relationship. So if we have the law already, why are we bringing same-sex marriage to it? And first of all, Nigerian marriage says that it's between a man and a woman. That's one that's constitution. So why is there, is there a need to bring a, a law that says gay men can get married? Because already, there's no, there's, the constitution doesn't recognize gay marriage already. There, it doesn't recognize gay marriage. So why are you saying that? Why, why, why was it need for the law to come up? The same-sex marriage yes. bill. Why, why, 
it's not everything you can write in the constitution. Even the American constitution, the British constitution, is they make it as slim as possible. So other laws, that's why we have the lawmaking bodies. There are other laws that have to be made by these bodies. So it's not everything that is enshrined in the constitution. However, I want to assure you, we've been empowered by the constitution to make these laws that are not there. And as I tell you, as I earlier on mentioned, Nigeria is a society that uh, have morals. We have morality. We have custom. We have culture that we still believe in. Now, if we, the sector of the people we are representing, that's what they want. And we have to give them what they want. So we try to compare what it's all what is obtainable from the waste in here in Nigeria. To me, it doesn't it doesn't sound right because why 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 is it that Nigeria? We didn't query when the law, the British, when the law was passed there. We didn't query American parliament or the American as a country when this law was passed there. They're entitled to well, their own know. internal affairs. This is purely in the general domestic affair. So nobody should intervene in our domestic affair. We have well, culture. Well, well, I'm, sir, I'm a Nigerian, and I'm, 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 and I'm referring to this law because it affects me, it affects my friends, friends of our core family, it affects my, 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 my people in Nigeria. That's why I'm referring to it. I'm, yeah, not, a, I, I'm not a foreigner. I'm a Nigerian. That's why I'm referring to this law because it, it affects Nigerian. me. This is democracy. The majority carries the vote. Majorities way, I mean, will uh, always sell through, sell through. Majority of Nigerian wants this law. So you can have your say, but majority will have its way. Nigerian mm -hmm. as a society, we, have, we, we they believe in it. So we have to pass it. This is democracy. The majority of the people, what they want, it what we do. So, sir, I'm going to ask you this question directly. You know, well, you, we, we have, I'm going to go to the L sector here. You know, Nigeria HIV prevalence rate right now. We are the second highest, in, second highest in the world where people are living with HIV in Nigeria are. People are living in the world. You know, the highest, the second highest uh, people living with HIV in, in the world lives in Nigeria. And then the, the prevalence rate of HIV in Nigeria, it's within the general population, is 4.1 percent. And within the MSN population in Nigeria, is 17.1 percent. And those people, are, some of them are living with HIV. And this law not says they cannot access services anymore. This law does not say people who provide this for them are not illegal. So what happens to people who live with HIV? What happens to people who, who, care, who, who need to get health care services? What happens to them? In Nigeria, oh, they die. Ev every government, from local government, state to the federal level, there's every year, in every year's budget, there's a special, special provision for HIV people. And we buy, the government buy drugs for them. We have, they have health facility. They have uh, free drugs. So that, that's a different ball game. So, so you this law, let, this law also this, says, this law this, says that this is this, this is law says and this must not be allowed to not, happen in the South of Nigeria. Whoever want to practice this law should go and stay where you are right now. If you are comfortably staying in America, stay there and practice or something. But so long as you are in Nigeria, you have to abide by the laws that exist in Nigeria. You are in United States. There are laws in United States. You must abide by these laws. You cannot abide with law that exists in Nigeria. We live in the United States. The law in Nigeria says there is no sodomy. There is no Mr. Jagaba, gay marriages. do stay yes. with us. Michael, stay with us. I know you're keen to carry on talking about this. We've got to take a quick break. So many comments coming in to us. Ball tweets, this law is a good move. Africans should stick to their cultures and the West to theirs. Why we accept their traditions when they accept ours. Keep using the hashtag WHYS on Twitter and we'll read as many of your comments as we can. Welcome back to World Have Your Say. We're still discussing anti-gay laws in Nigeria. While the Western world has widely condemned the move by the Nigerian president, our audience in Nigeria are widely backing it. We want your thoughts. You can tweet us using the hashtag WHYS. Welcome 
back to World Have Your Say. Well, when we posted this earlier in the week, we got more, almost a thousand comments on our Facebook page. And I have to say, so many of your comments coming into us now. McGenvy in Kampala tweets, I don't support homosexuality at all, but I think Nigeria is very harsh to these people. Naomi has tweeted, Nigerian gays should come out and stage a protest in Nigeria. Uh, Musa posts on Facebook, great job, Nigeria. Other African states should follow suit. Well, all of your comments go to facebook.com forward slash world have your say and we'll read more of them throughout the program. I'm pleased to say that Michael is still with us. He's a gay rights activist in New York. The Honourable Jagabar Adams Jagabar is from the uh, ruling party in Nigeria is here to answer your questions. Raquel is a social worker in Lagos. But first, let's cross over to Richard, who joins us on the line in Abuja. He is a gay man. It's not his real name. For obvious reasons, he wants to protect his identity. But um, tell us, Richard, your experiences right now in Abuja, how difficult is it for you being a gay man? Okay, yeah, my name is Richard actually and I'm a Nigerian gay. But I think now for a person um, in Nigeria now, it's very hard for a person like me to live in Nigeria because of me, me and to yellow the or not. And I don't think what the government did is right because we are also humans and we need to have our own right to do what we want. We don't choose to be this way, and we don't choose to be gay. We grow up and find it in ourselves, and we can't change it. The more you try to change it, the more it gets worse. So, but uh, the things the government is supposed to do in this issue, that they're supposed to find the solution to help us if they want us to change, at least to help us. And if there is cure, then they should help us with the cure, not by threatening us with a law. Because we also need freedom, because we are Nigerian also. And in this issue, they don't supposed to put eyes on what people are doing in their bedroom. They're supposed to put eyes on what people are doing outside. And we didn't go outside. We are there, and we go after guys like us. We don't go after anyone. We go for our people. Because I'm gay, yeah, I'm gay, I know I'm gay. But at least we need our all right. And, um, and you know now, they will only make us scared to be scared to come out, but it won't change anything. Because now, as I am, I'm very scared, even when I'm speaking on the phone, I'm scared, I know. So please, the government should try and look into this. We are human, and we don't choose to be gay. We are born with it, and we can't change it. Well, Richard, prayer, Richard, let me, Richard, that's a very good point that you make, and I want to put that to uh, Mr. Jagabar, who joins us now, still with us. Richard making the point there, he's a human being, he's Nigerian like everybody else, and he didn't choose to be gay. This is just the way he is, and he just wants to know what you expect from him. Uh, thank you very much. As uh, Elaron stated, this is uh, democracy. Majority always have its way. Majority of Nigerians want this law passed. Just as when it was passed in this U.S., it's not every citizen of America that like the gay law, but majority of the American wants it, so it passed. In the U.K., the same thing. Some U.K., there are some people that have serious morality in the US, U.K., but they didn't like it. The majority of the, the citizens said they want it, so it passed. In Nigeria, in the same vein, we majority of people want the law passed, and we pass it. So it is democracy, and uh, that's the position of the country for now. And that's the position of Nigeria from the grassroots. We consulted the, our people, then that's what they want. And this democracy, and uh, they, we pass it. So that, that's, 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 uh, that's all I can say about that. Richard, just tell us. Yeah, can uh, I ask a question, please? Richard, yeah, we're hello. hearing there that, that this is democracy in action and this is what you have to understand in a democracy. The majority of people in Nigeria don't uh, approve of homosexuality and therefore these anti-gay laws have been passed. I just would be interested to know from your own personal perspective, uh, does anybody know that you're gay? Do, do your family, do your friends know? No, but in my family... Actually, we are two. I and my brother, we are all gay, but no one knows. And even my brother don't know I am gay. I only know he is one because we live on a social network. So I know he is, but he don't know I am. And uh, this thing, what you look into this is that 
We don't go after the people that they are not gay. We go after the people that they are. We don't go after the people that they are. We go to our own members. Because we can't go out to who is not caught in the bar. So they have to just let us be at least. If there is a cure, they should help us with the cure. If they want us to stop this, not by putting law against us so that the justice is threatening us and let us be hiding. We are not animals. We are human beings. The more you try to stop this, the more it gets worse. So the best thing is to just remove the law. They should just want us to be careful. We don't, after, we don't go after to the people that they are not there. We go to our members, yes. So the discussion is that, that I want to ask that young man there is that he should look at this as if he is me and he is gay. And this law come up. What will he say about this? I just want him to answer, answer this question that if he is gay, will he allow them to put this law? Even, yes, this is how it is. I know the Islamic is not allowed, even the Christianity, but still, we don't choose to be it. We just grow up and find ourselves in this. So we have no choice, but still we are human. I will, uh, probably I'm happy to be gay, yeah, seriously. Richard, thank you for joining us. Mr. Jagabar, do you want to respond to Richard? Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, uh, Richard, I want to say this rather unfortunate. Um, as I'll keep on saying this is democracy. Um, for you to find yourself a, to be a gay, I think you one needs to retrace his route anyway to find out. But to me, I, this program itself, I find it difficult to believe it. When the law was passed in the UK, when the law was, was passed in the US, such a program was not organized to ask African opinion on the matter. I, why now? As far as I'm concerned, to me, it's an attempt, you know, the, 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 economically, we were plundered during the colonial era. Now, our morality, uh, the Western world wants to plunder our morality. And this is the situation we say no as, as Africans. You see, there are laws, there are laws that exist in the UK, they, you bring them to Nigeria, they cannot work. For instance, polygamy is allowed in Africa. If you go to the US or to the UK, it's not allowed. So you cannot compare one society belief and the other. It's difficult to do that. The moment you do that, you can probably not get an answer. So this Africa, this uh, belief, we still believe in morality in this uh, uh, part of the world. We still believe in Mr. it. Mr. Jagabar, I would certainly say, certainly on World Have Your Say, we've had many discussions about same-sex marriage, and it's certainly true there are lots of people in the UK, in the US, in France, who do have concerns about it, and we certainly have discussed it. I guess the difference is, if you are against same-sex marriage in the UK, although it will soon be legal, those people aren't hauled out and attacked in the streets, as we've heard has been the case with Michael, when it was discovered that he was gay, he was hauled out in the streets, he was attacked, he was nearly killed. In the UK, if you don't agree with same-sex marriage, that doesn't happen to you. That, I guess, is the difference. Oh, that, that is not true. In Nigeria, the, the, the last person that just spoke, if truly is in Abuja as I am, I could remember there was a time they came out to protest. They were not... Uh, uh, prevented by the police. Nobody stopped them from the protest. It was free. Nigeria, this is democracy in Nigeria. You can come out and protest. Nobody can stop you. It's just, I think the major problem they have is, uh, is the societal uh, shame that is on their face. They cannot come out to actually accept uh, the society that they are gays. That's the only thing. Is the, the their conscience is policing them, but not Nigerian police, no Nigerian government. Nobody is stopping them from coming to protest. And we had a public hearing uh, before we passed this. Uh, every Nigerian was called upon to come and make a submission. Gay as a group, the people like Michael didn't come to present his position. Nobody came to, say, to say this is our position. Can, Nobody can came. I say something? Can, can, I, go can ahead. I respond? Of course you oh, can, yes. Michael. I just want to I just want to respond because I know the, pub, the last public hearing, I was there in the last public hearing in 2011, and people that presented, the lady and the guy that presented, they were, not, they, they were not allowed to speak. They were booed by the senators. They were shouted on by the senators. They were insulted by the senators. I remember clearly, the lady that was speaking, we were there in the, in the, in, in the room. People were booing us, the, 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 the religious activists, the, the Christians, the, the Muslims, they were all booing the, us that were there that, as gay activists that came to, 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 to say things like bad, uh, against the bill. They didn't want to allow to speak. They didn't have allowed us to read. They were insulting us. They were shouting on us. You know, 
So let me just ask it, like my, like Richard, uh, Richard said earlier, you know, he was born gay, so I, so I was, I was born gay, and I wish I could change, you know? Because, you know, how would you want to live a life that people constantly harass you? How do you choose to live a life that people constantly assault you, a life that you could go to jail for? And you, Michael, you unfortunately, to... as you ask that question, Mr Jagabar's line has fallen down. We're going to try and patch that up. He can still hear us, but we can't see him. In the meantime, let's pull up this video. It's from Yomi Ibrahim in Ade in Nigeria, and he sent us this video. I'm not worried about gay legislation or no gay legislation. I'm not worried that the country passed gay laws or did not pass gay laws. I worry that how do such um, personal choices like uh, sexual orientation become an uh, issue of global discussion or economic negotiation? I worry particularly that if we know, a time may come when a country may get financial aid or even pardon from the Paris Club because such a country, such country A or B has a sanctioned gay law or not. I also worry that it is possible that we might find issues like gay or no gay replacing other more important issues like gender equality, education, and so and other important factors that the MDG has come to consider. So whether a country passes gay law or does not pass gay law is not what I worry about. I worry that these issues may replace some other more important issues as we go on. That comment coming into us via WhatsApp. If you want to send us a video via WhatsApp, facebook.com forward slash world, have your say is the place to go. All of our details are on there. Just worth saying at this point, this is the highest number of calls we've ever had into world, have your say on this discussion. Please keep your comments coming. We'll get as many of them into the conversation as we can. Raquel, I wonder if you want to pick up on that last point made there, that actually this is a bit of a distraction. There are far more important issues to, to focus on in Nigeria. And quite frankly, time being taken up on anti-gay laws is a waste of time. Uh, the, that's actually true, because first there was the ASU strike, which didn't, didn't let some of us graduate on time. We were worried for a very long time. And then there's corruption, which is eating deep into the country. But then um, I know that we have pressing issues, education, the public schools are really bad. You know, the education system is really, really messed up. We should look into it. The health sector, a lot of things are really bad in the country. The roads are bad. You can't drive from here to Kano. The road is really bad. People die on the road a lot. But then I'm also saying that all these things were not attacked early. And that's how we got to where we are today. And so if this matter is a pressing issue and needs to be attacked early, I think we should give it a thought and we should look into it. And I'm glad the president has passed this bill and has signed this bill. And it's if you are gay and you're caught, you go to jail. I, I, I don't know. I don't think the I don't know if I would say the 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 find the the, the offense is, is that there's no offense. But I'm just saying that. If we have other pressing issues, we should also look at it. This whole gay thing, we're making a big fuss out of it. What, what will we gain as a country if we allow people marry, same-sex marry? We can't have children. So the Michael, the Michael talking about, how did it come about from a man and a woman? So why is he worried about marrying another man when it won't bring anything to society? For me, it is a waste because if I see a man and a woman kissing on the road, I'll be disgusted. I'm sorry to say that, but that's the truth. That's my honest opinion. And I speak for major, majority of people. And as a social worker, I'm also afraid to work with a young person that is gay. Because right now, on my forms, I'm beginning to think, if I have to ad interview someone, I'll ask him, are you gay? Just because I don't want to get into trouble also. If I see a street kid, I'm afraid to take that street kid because I'm not sure why the child left home. So what if the child left home because he's gay? And then I assist that street kid because I'm a social worker, and I go to jail too. So it's also coming down on us as social workers and as people who offer services to these people in the society. It is not just about them, it's also about us. So right now, I, if I have to help them, I have to be looking out for people who are not gay to help, and which is not good for me because I would like to help everyone. So Michael, Richard, I feel for you, I'm sorry, but like the Honorable said, it is democracy. Majority of us do not want it. If the country where you are wants it, please move to a country that wants it. We don't. And you talked about corruption and saying that we're not looking into corruption. Well, we are looking into corruption. That's the same thing that we did that we, uh, corruption got to where it is right now. If when corruption started in this country, people said, oh, you know what, let's attack this before it got bigger. We would have gotten it off our hands. But nobody did. People were just looking at it like, oh, we have better things to do. And now corruption is eating deep. And even a child is corrupt. You see a five-year-old sneaking and doing stuff that is really, really bad. So I'm just saying basically the end of it is we should look into all this matter. If it is not going to add anything to this country, please scrap it off. I'm sorry Raquel. I'm being very, very mean, but I've spoken to a lot of people about this matter, and I'm sure the majority of Nigerians don't want this at all. 
Raquel, I'm going to jump in at this point. Thank you so much for joining us from Lagos. Michael, thank you also for joining us from New York. So much discussion still going on on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash world have your say. Let me bring you some of the comments which are coming into us live here. Maspenbi in Zambia says, let them imprison fornicators, adulterers, liars as well. In a continent where marriage is just seen as a woman's place to get children and men to have so many extramarital affairs, I dare say, let who is without sin cast the first stone. And and uh, we've also had this tweet. This is the best law ever to come out of Nigeria. Gay and lesbians can relocate to Western nations and can continue to do their thing if they want to do so. Well, for the last 10 minutes or so of the programme, we're going to turn our attention to a story which has been playing out online over the last few days. It's um, centred around a US woman who's been blogging about her battle with breast cancer. And two articles were picked up by um, many people online. They were written by Bill Kellner in the New York Times and also by his wife, Emma Kellner, who writes for The Guardian in the UK. They questioned whether the continual tweets by this woman, Lisa Bonchak Adams, about her fight with breast cancer was actually sharing too much information. And she questioned whether it helped other sufferers. Lots of people got involved and in fact one of the articles was pulled down from the Guardian site. Let's pull up a couple of comments to demonstrate this story if you haven't been following it online. Bill Kellner writes in the New York Times, his Keller, um, her digital presence is no doubt a comfort to many of her followers. On the other hand, as cancer experts I consulted pointed out, Adams is the standard bearer for an approach to cancer that honours the, the warrior that may raise false hopes and that implicitly seems to peg patients like my father-in-law as failures. Well, in one of her responses, Lisa Adams tweeted tweets and posts um, I've made will live on as part of I what I leave behind one day. They will endure. It is better to be honourable and reflect on my family. Interesting points there. And it got an online discussion going about whether it's appropriate and honourable to tweet, to blog about serious diseases like cancer. I'm pleased to say we're joined by three people now who are doing just that. So it'll be interesting to get their take on it. Wethira Kabiru is in Nairobi and um, she describes herself as a digital diva, a soccer mum and soon to be cancer survivor. Wethira, welcome to World Have Your Say. Amy is um, a cancer survivor in New Mexico, author of the blog cancerissofunny.com. And Laura is in Devon in the UK. Her blog is Laura Louise and her naughty disease. Great to see all of you. First of all, what did you make of all the controversy surrounding Lisa Bonchak Adams, um, the articles that were written about her, the tweets that she has been putting out there? Laura, first of all. Um, what do I make of it? I think it's a little bit um, unfair. I think that she's entitled to have her opinion and if she wants to put it out to the world, you don't have to read it if you don't agree with it. But if she's happy to do that and it makes her feel better about everything that's going on, then I think she should continue to do that. You're a, a young woman yourself who's had to, to confront this disease far younger than many people often think is the case with cancer. Why did you feel it was important to, to put it out there online? Why did you want to blog? So my main reason was to raise awareness um, and obviously the internet and blogging and tweeting is a really great way of doing that. Um, so I started a blog basically to raise awareness of breast cancer in younger women, let them know that they should be aware of the signs and symptoms um, and hopefully, yeah, save some lives along the way. Amy, is that something you can identify with? OK, we've got a problem with problem Amy's with line. Amy's While we try to connect to that, let's go to Waythera, who's in Nairobi. Can you identify with that? Uh, absolutely. I also started blogging to raise awareness. Um, I realised when I was diagnosed, a lot of my friends and family didn't really understand what I was going through. I myself, you know, had to do also a lot of research. And when I started writing about it in my journal, I said, let me put it out there onto a blog. And I got a lot of comments and emails, which... You know, it also helped me cope with what I was going through because I got a lot of encouragement and support and, and great questions um, um, so, because people didn't know how to deal with what I was going through. So it, it helped the people who were supporting me and I believe it helped a lot of people out there as well.
It's quite interesting you say there it sort of gave information to people because I can imagine when you're fighting a disease like cancer, it must be exhausting to continually go over and over again with all of your loved ones, what you're going through, how you're coping. Is it a device, uh, um, Amy, to be able to convey to people what you're going through without having to have the same conversations over and over again? Um, I, I think in some ways, yes. Um, and I, again, I think it's very individual. I think any uh, people can blog for whatever reason they want. For me, it's just very therapeutic to get out my, my rage or my sorrow or my happiness. Um, but I definitely think it's very unfair and really irrational for a newspaper columnist to personalize to himself what someone else is writing about on their blog. One of the criticisms that was raised in these articles, which proved so controversial to so many people, and I'd be interested for all of you really to discuss this and me really to step back, was the idea of sharing too much information. Do you think that that is the case? Laura, maybe you could, you could answer first and then by all means, ladies, you, you get involved. So I think it's up to you what you want to share with the world and if you don't want to read what other people are sharing then you don't have to she's not forcing everyone to be a follower to be her follower on twitter or to read her blog posts she's simply describing how she feels and what it's like for her and i think she's entitled to do that i don't think i think obviously there are some stuff that maybe you don't want in your face like the bad parts of chemotherapy and things but if it helps her to talk about it i don't see why she shouldn't be allowed to or why it should be frowned upon by other people i agree i mean i i don't want to intentionally gross anybody out um but they can look if they want and they don't have to if they don't want i i don't really understand why it why it's an issue at all. I mean, I think a, a blog is a personal way of communicating. Why, Sarah? Um, I, and I think uh, in, the era of, in the era of social media, uh, we put out a lot of content out there. And, if, and it's always said, if you put out content that you're not comfortable for the public, for the world to see, then don't put it out there. And if you are comfortable with it, put it out there and know that it will be seen you know, across borders and it will be there forever. So I think she, um, I guess she was cognizant of the fact that she's, you know, putting out content out there that her children will see later on and what have you. And, and just to be fair, it's her decision, it's social media, um, you know, that's the world we live in today. Amy, you're nodding. Well, absolutely. <laughs> I, I mean, absolutely. I put stuff out there. Some people are um, maybe offended by the title of my blog, which is Cancer is So Funny. Um, they it's don't funny, understand. It's funny you should say that, Amy, because actually at the moment you won't be able to appreciate, but the pictures from cartoons and drawings from your blog are actually on, um, on screen at the moment, so people are appreciating them around the world. Oh, great. Okay, so they can see that, um, that the funny part is the humor that I use to, uh, that's how I cope, is, is with humor. But yeah, some people have objected just to the title itself. Some people have written and said, well, your blog's okay, but I want you to change the title. And it's like, hey, it's my title, it's my cancer. You know, you don't like it, get your own title. Get your own cancer if you want. Nick Lay is joining us. He's a blogger in Malaysia who is blogging um, about his battle with cancer. Nick, what do you think? Are there, there certain boundaries for you? Are there certain things that you wouldn't put out there on your blog? Well, um, well, personally to me, I don't think there should be a boundary when you want to share something out, something like cancer. Right, um, cancer is like a thing which a lot of people do not understand. So it would be good if you just share everything out without a limit, all right? Uh, even the pain, the, uh, the, the experience that you had to go through, the family or what, whatsoever, just put it out there. People would read it and they would appreciate what you, are, what you are sharing in it. If they don't like it, then you can just skip it. You know, in, in, this, in, this, uh, in this century, right, in the world that we are living in right now, everywhere that you see, right, it's, a lot of things are being digital. Uh, and, and social media is also a way for us to share. 
So if you don't like it, you just don't braid it. If you like it, then you just go ahead and braid it. It's as simple as that. Laura, I wonder Laura. when you think about the people who are reading your blog, do you ever worry that it's actually a morbid curiosity? Oh, I don't know. I think with my blog, I try to be really positive. So I think um, obviously people are intrigued to find out what it's like for someone going through cancer or um, that kind of thing. I don't think, I think it's more talked about now than it ever was, but it definitely can be talked about more. Um, but yeah, I guess it is curiosity and, and things, but everyone's entitled to be curious and hopefully they can learn about what it's really like rather than have just illusions or whatever in their mind well laura thank you for joining us if you want to head to laura's blog you can go to laura louise and her naughty disease thank you also to nick lay and to amy well that's all for this edition of world have your say i'll be on world service radio at 18 gmt so hopefully you can join us then but thanks ever so much for watching let's just say something